So the AstraZeneca jab, mm. um, uh, supposedly someone has said that that could be the reason that at the moment Britain is doing better than Europe. By coincidence, the person who said that the AstraZeneca jab could be the, uh, jab could mm. be the reason why just happens to be the AstraZeneca boss. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. so that's just a total coincidence. But then, to be fair, he's the guy who did it for non as a non-profit kind of thing, isn't yeah, he? AstraZeneca. So, yeah. so I, I, I grant him the opportunity. So he did a whole interview, yeah. and then he went at the end, oh, well, you know, not that there's any proof of anything. Yeah. <laughs> just like, he did the whole thing, T-cells and mm. anti antibodies, and then just said, like, oh, not that there's anything. If I were him, I would still be smarter, because I think it was Macron, wasn't it, who came back and yeah. going, oh, this, it doesn't, we don't like it, it's uh, dangerous for the old people. Good French think, accent yeah, there. <laughs> Just telling him, oh, it's my beautiful wife. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I think Merkel had things to say as well about AstraZeneca. Do your German point. accent. I'm not going to do the Merkel accent because I've never actually heard her speak. I've only ever heard her in translation. But I do think that there is a kind of... There's a little bit of needle between AstraZeneca and the leaders of Europe, isn't there? Mm. Just a little bit of a sense that they are... You know, they've been kind of bullied around a bit. Pfizer has been held up to be the only vaccine that needs a fridge. You know, AstraZeneca, you can kind of flog it off a market stall. Can that really be proper science? Yes, the iron brew of the vaccine world. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the <laughs> AstraZeneca are taking a profit now. So maybe this yeah. is part of their sales pitch to oh, get everybody uh, to use the AstraZeneca oh, they are now. vaccine. Oh, that's but, great. I mean, there, there was, yeah, there was a lot of friction between uh, Europe and Britain and, and Europe and, the, and AstraZeneca uh, over... Because uh, Europe... Um, really uh, messed up their, their vaccine rollout and didn't right. sign the contracts and didn't account for any contingency. Right. So they were very slow in getting the vaccines out. Whereas in Britain, where we weren't encumbered by Brexit, it was one of the, I mean, I, I voted Brexit. Uh, I, I voted Remain in Brexit. I mean, not for political reasons, just because yeah. my mum's moved to Spain and I want oh, to stay there. To stay there, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it showed me there are actually some advantages. Like, we've, we've got a much more sort of nimble and, uh, and yeah. you can move faster without being encumbered by the European system. Yeah, it's like basically buying stuff... Out you know, out the back of a van, isn't it? You can, yeah. you can get it without the warranty, Instead but you get it that much through the, the hanging <laughs> council procurement process. Yeah, but I do like the fact that AstraZeneca has switched to a profit. It's a bit like when well, you I kind of sign up for something and the first six months are yeah. free, and then one day you think, oh, my God, <laughs> I'll just check me banks. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, I say good luck to them. I, 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 have to, I do agree with you. You know, the vaccine success story has been extraordinary. Obviously, Kate Bingham is an absolute wizard, you know, wizardess, mm. and... Um, and she has kind of performed miracles for us. Mm. But generally speaking, I think it was extraordinarily important for the morale of the nation, regardless of which yeah. way you waged, you know.